Hello Booktube. Before I start with the video, I firstly need to extend a massive thank you to Mel at Mel's Bookland Adventures for um, recommending my channel. Mel has such an amazing channel, such an amazing reader, reads such amazing books and talks about them that I feel completely honored to have somebody like her Rick will even notice my tiny little channel that has been struggling to be partially consistent ever since life went crazy last year. But I really do appreciate it and thank you so much. And then next I have to say welcome to all my new subscribers. I hope you enjoy your time here and I hope that life is going to, you know, just calm down and give me a chance to get back to being the reader and booktuber and whatnot that I was once upon a time. Not that it was that long ago, but you, know, you get where I'm going. But um, yeah, and then obviously my next question is, is that what do I do when I reach 500? Because the last time I checked, I had 499. Yes, I know you're not supposed to say this. It is jinxing the whole thing. Next tomorrow morning when I look, I'm going to be at 302. But anyway, um, when you reach 500, it is tradition to do a book giveaway or something along those lines and unfortunately I have to point out that this is Africa that one the price of books is ridiculously expensive here so that's unlikely to happen and then the next thing is is that I'm going to then spend the price of two or three books to put it in the post for it to be stolen and just in case you think I'm being super negative or well, unrealistic when I was living in South Korea I posted six boxes home not one arrived not one all six were stolen so there is the evidence once bitten twice shy I've learned my lesson so we're gonna to have to think of something else if you have any ideas I would really really appreciate them because I don't know I mean everybody does the Q&A and I, I suppose it's a possibility but you know I, I'm kind of a bit boring um, I mean it came out my youth might not have been but you know there are things I would like to distance my elder self from, which mostly was stuff that happened in my youth. <laughs> so, I don't know. I, I will give it some thought, and if you have any great ideas, I would love to hear from you. Anyway, getting on to this video. So, this video is going to be a bit of a mishmash. First thing I'm going to do is talk about the book that I read. And, yes, once again, it is only one book. This is super embarrassing. And then I'm going to go on and talk about time touch on reading slumps. I'm not in a reading slump, but I'm going to touch on that. And then I'm going to talk about teaching because I am absolutely really enjoying my new job and I would like to share some things about it. But, and also probably give you an idea as to why I've only managed to read one book in two weeks. Oh, embarrassment. And um, yeah, and then maybe, just maybe, I might mention something to do with yoga so that I keep myself going. <laughs> So let's not waste any more time and let me talk about Cider with Rosie by Laurie Lee. And this was actually a really pleasant read. Um, Laurie Lee has got the most beautiful imagery on paper that I have read in a very, very long time. He has got beautiful imagery. Um, he really creates the scene so vividly in your mind. And that is definitely this book's strong point. Um, it is, however, an autobiography, and I think that was one of the problems with me reading it. It's not that I had a problem with reading it, but I wasn't really driven to pick it up. And that is because I have never read anything by Laurie Lee before, so I didn't really know who he was. I don't even know if I've seen anything that he's written for the screen. So it's, it's not like picking up an autobiography of somebody that you're curious about. You know, how did they get their inspiration? What happened in their childhood to make them so twisted? You know, those kind of things. There, there was nothing like that. So, and the story is pure innocence. For a while there, I thought I might be able to use it for the reading through the ages read along. But I don't think it's going to work for interwar because although one of his earliest memories was the end of World War One, and I know he does take part in World War Two, the town that he lived in, and I want to say Colchester. If it's not, I will write it down below. And um, there was, it was a town that progress forgot. It was so isolated, so innocent, so backwards. It's only in the last couple of chapters that you actually hear of a vehicle that is not moved by four legs or two, you know, the bicycle. It doesn't sound like, it doesn't, it didn't sound like they had brakes. But anyway, so 
it, it was quite a gorgeous story but you know it's also following the autobiography um so well being an autobiography it doesn't have the narrative plot structure so there is no rising action there is no climax etc although i did enjoy the way he handed handled conflict between his mom and his sisters um, or family members when things happened because he didn't do it in a way that made anybody look bad which was really nice i thought that showed a lot of respect for his family um i mean he highlighted that things happened and i'm not even talking that like there was a lot of conflict he had really innocent childhood and but it was when his sisters were wanting to get married and mom wasn't all too keen on the idea so there was a little bit of you know trouble and, and things like that and even though you know reading between the lines you can gather that his mom was a bit scatterbrained and you know <laughs> maybe a bit flawed in multiple areas um, he doesn't highlight it overtly he does it um, very well I think he sh he showed that he loved his family and how he represented them and yeah so if you like beautiful writing I would recommend reading Cider with Rosie um, if you are a little bit more plot driven perhaps give it a skip but it was an interesting read I just I didn't find myself driven to pick it up or driven to push through more pages because you know something exciting was going to happen it was just a nice little plod along it was pretty cute anyway so now I am going to head on to waffle and at the moment I'm feeling a bit bad as a reader because I'm not getting through books I cannot remember when last it took me two weeks two weeks to read something this thin and it has pictures I kid you not it has pictures and you know full page pictures <laughs> and I, I feel really bad about it but you know the reality is is that one has 24 hours in the day and until Doctor Who comes to kidnap me and take me off in his TARDIS I'm going to be stuck with 24 hours a day and that's what I've got to work with I was I'm not in a reading slump in the slightest. I've, I can't say I've ever really been in a reading slump. In the past where I haven't been inclined to read, it's because I'm reading a book that I shouldn't be reading. It's either one of those books that wrong time, wrong place, which doesn't really happen all that often, but it's very often a book that I just should not be reading. And when it gets to the case where I actually have to force myself to pick it up and I'm not enjoying what I'm reading, I tend to watch my numbers drop and I've learned from in the, especially in the last year in the last year I think I've been inspired by Sean I have bailed on a few of those books <laughs> and I don't feel bad about it anymore I, I feel bad financially as I said books here cost a fortune and I don't like the idea of spending a fortune on a book to not read it and that's usually why I've pushed myself through reading books that I don't enjoy. But I've got so many books that I really want to read that I'm, I'm finding it harder to justify doing that now. I would rather just go flog it off at the second-hand bookshop and pick something else up there instead. And um, so I'm not really in a reading slump. I'm just really finding it difficult to find the time for things. You see, when you teach here in South Africa, you don't just teach. You are a part of sport and culture and extra lessons and so many other things I mean there was a day this week that I got home after nine at night for the first time and you know it's you still have to prepare your lessons and I really do want to put a lot of effort into that it's where my A1 personality comes in there, there are many things that I'm quite happy to brush off and not bother about putting much effort in but when it comes to work man it's all or nothing and it's never been nothing it's it's always all and I have a fabulous bunch of kids that I'm teaching at the moment in fact you know <laughs> I always used to say kids here don't read and I've never seen children in this country read and suddenly I'm teaching kids that stand outside my classroom I mean the one girl in the last two weeks read it by Stephen King and granted I'm, I'm not like yay Stephen King but 
wow, that was impressive. Because usually when I've given kids tasks to read, they consider it, consider it something like root canal, you know, painful, let's get it over with and we'll only do it when, you know, 100% necessary. And I'm really enjoying that culture. And because these kids are so interested and so keen, and because the ethos of the school is actually for once academically driven and not sports driven, which is, yes, um, I, it's, it's, it's my natural habitat. So I, I'm kind of going, yes, they agree with me. I can give it everything. And I really would like to. And I've got a really great class that's in matric this year. And I would like to get some A's. You know, they're the ones who have to write the exams, but I'm the one who's going to coach them to do that. So I'd like to get some really good marks. And it's not just for the kids, because, I mean, obviously it would be great for them to get the marks, but it would also be great for me as their teacher to help them get those marks. And then on top of it, I'm a part of English debating, and that has taken up a lot of time this week. Um, we've had workshops on that, which was quite interesting, especially considering I knew absolutely nothing about English, well, about debating. I mean, I, I know what a debate is. I've had debates, but casual social things, not structured with tables and people with bells and times and, you know, mark sheets. And I didn't know what the hell was going on at these workshops because they're teaching you how to do it, but they assume you know what you're doing already. And um, today, um, Saturday even, I've been at school for two Saturdays in a row. I'm starting to feel like I'm in Korea. And... Um, yeah, I actually watched a debate and I have my work cut out for me, but I think I'm going to love it because this is something that had I known about it, I think I would have been good at. It is rugby, but verbal rugby where nobody gets injured and there's no sweating involved. I think it's brilliant. It's verbal warfare and oh, I can have so much fun with this. So that's a lot of where my time is going oh and I'm on the school magazine too did I mention that and I do all the graphic designing once again me and my big mouth I went into the school going you are not going to brag about the fact that you can do stuff on computers and what did I do oh your cat teacher your computer teacher is a bit overbooked yeah, I can do it for you it's fun suddenly here I am designing um, designing certificates and posters and all sorts of things but Anyway, I will survive. I just don't know how well I will be doing at reading at the moment. Because the, obviously the other thing, the, the side with teaching, especially with English, is um, the literature. And it's one thing reading it for fun. I have read Othello many times, but I've never, well, I taught it once in 2008. But I didn't teach the whole thing because it was my student teaching Things. So it was only a few months that we were there and um, it's very different teaching something to just reading it for fun because there's so many other things that you've got to look for. Don't, 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 you're going to knock the camera flying. Caps. Yeah. Sorry, my child is wanting attention. All my animals are acting up like crazy. The other day I walked in the house, my poor dogs have seen me for two days in two weeks and they were so excited that... They jumped up at me and actually tore my shirt, which says I love you, but it's also, you know, I can't afford to go through a shirt a week and um, or a day at this rate. Anyway, I'm going to have to keep this brief because at this rate I'm going to have to start refilming because His Royal Highness here has decided that he is going to shake the camera around and all sorts of things. And, um, but the last thing I want to talk about is yoga. So when I spoke about my real life, well, my real goals for the year, I said that I needed to start looking at me and, you know, making a few plans to improve things. And I must admit that I actually have been doing this. I didn't start the 30 days with Adrian on the 1st of January because it's holidays and then there's no schedule and it's very difficult to try and fit things in. And if I want to do something, then I need to have a schedule for it. So I waited until the second week of school so that I had an idea as to what my schedule would be like. And then most nights I do it. I've done an entire week in a row, um, seven days in a row, and three days before then, not necessarily in a row, but 
you know, work has to come first. If I'm still busy setting lessons at half past 11 at night, I'm not going to stop and do yoga and then carry on with that. That's just stupid. So when I can, I fit it in. And I must admit that I'm actually feeling a lot better with myself. I'm feeling a lot lighter in my feet and I'm actually feeling a lot more energetic, which is really weird because who would have thought that those people who said that doing exercise gives you energy when you're spending energy. It sounds like all that stuff that they say about love. Anyway, so that was a lot of waffle. I'm going to have to go and look at this now and see if I can salvage everything with cat's tails and all sorts of other things in it. And waffle, lots of waffle. Really sorry about the waffle. Happy reading. Bye for now. See you later.